Pythagorean Theorem Notes. On this page, you can see a real-life example of using the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem provides us with a real-world application of radicals. In this example, we can use right triangles and the Pythagorean Theorem to determine the distance from the top of the lighthouse to the sailboat. Let's learn how to do this together. Let's review what you learned yesterday in the Pythagorean Theorem investigation. Yesterday you looked at a series of right triangles that were formed by three squares touching each other. When looking at the side lengths of each square, you probably noticed that when we square the side length of A or find the area of A, square side length B or find the area of B, the sum of those two areas is equal to the area of square C or side length C squared. When looking at the second example, you notice the same thing, that the side length of A squared plus the side length of B squared is equal to the side length of C squared. The relationship observed in both of these series of squares is called the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem explains the relationship between the three sides of a right triangle. Let's look at this in more depth. The Pythagorean Theorem shows the relationship between the sides of a right triangle. In the box on the top, we're going to write the formula for the Pythagorean Theorem, and then we will look at this more closely with some examples. The formula for the Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This theorem applies to right triangles. As a reminder, a right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle, and we know that right angles measure 90 degrees. Looking at the orange diagram to the left, let's label this right triangle together with some key vocabulary. The first key vocabulary word is a leg. The legs are the sides that form the right angle of the triangle, so it's the two shorter sides that form the right angle at their vertex. Let's label these two sides together. In the Pythagorean Theorem, our two legs are labeled A and B. The hypotenuse is the side of the triangle which is opposite from the right angle and it's also the longest side. In looking at our diagram, we can find the hypotenuse by starting at the right angle and finding the side opposite it. Let's label this hypotenuse together. In the Pythagorean Theorem, the hypotenuse is always the side C. When we're thinking about the Pythagorean Theorem, it is okay if we switch A and B. However, your hypotenuse must always be labeled C. There's one other important vocabulary word for you to know, and this is a Pythagorean triple. A Pythagorean triple is a special type of right triangle. It's a set of three numbers or three side lengths that fit the Pythagorean theorem. We can use their ratio to quickly find the side lengths of other right triangles. An example of a Pythagorean triple is a right triangle with side lengths 3, 4, and 5. We can use the ratio of these side lengths to know that if we have a right triangle with side lengths 6 and 8, the hypotenuse must be 10. We will look at a few examples of Pythagorean triples on the following page. Before moving on to do some examples together, let's review some important symbols. This is not included in your notes, but I would like you to add it in the margins or wherever you have some blank space on your page. The symbol for an angle looks like this. The symbol for specifically a right angle looks like an L with this small box. That box at the vertex tells us that that angle is 90 degrees. The symbol for a triangle looks like this. It is just a triangle. And as we know from our study of radicals, a square root looks like this. The first type of problem that we will come across when working with Pythagorean theorem is determining is the triangle a right triangle? In order for it to be a right triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared must equal c squared. So the first thing we need to do is look at the side lengths and determine which are our legs and which is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. So in this first example, the hypotenuse is 10. The other two 
are our legs, six and eight. So we know that A and B are six and eight, and 10 is our hypotenuse. If we wanted to visualize this triangle, we could draw it out with the six and the eight and the 10 as the longest side. And what we are trying to determine is, is this angle a right angle? In order to do that, we substitute our numbers into our formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I check to see is six squared plus eight squared equal to 10 squared. I evaluate each of these three values and I get 36 plus 64 maybe equals 100. Since 36 plus 64 does equal 100, I would say, yes, this is a right triangle. So I know that this is a right angle. I want you to try the next two, pause the video, and then press play to see how you did. In the next example, I identified my longest side as four, so I labeled that as my hypotenuse, and then my legs are one and two. Now, before I keep going and show you that the Pythagorean theorem does not work for this case, we actually could not make a triangle at all out of these side lengths. This one and this two are too short to reach our four, and we know that the two shorter sides on a, si on a triangle must add to something longer than the third side to make any triangle. However, if we did not notice that, when we substitute in our legs one and two and our hypotenuse four, we notice that we do not get a true statement, so this is not a right triangle. In example three, we do get a right triangle. We see that our legs, A and B, are the two shorter sides, and our hypotenuse, C, is 13 inches. I did mislabel those a second ago, if you noticed. Since we get a true statement, we know that it is a right triangle. We have one more example that's a little bit trickier. Before we do that example, let's do what's in the box here. Recall that a square root and a square cancel out. So the square root of four squared just leaves us with four. If you wanted to expand it out, we'd have the square root of four times the square root of four, which is two times two, and we see that we get four. Or you could even put those radicals together to be the square root of 16, but that's unnecessary work. We'll do that in the next case. So the square root of nine squared is nine. Again, the square root of nine is three. Squaring it brings us back to nine. In these next two cases, we need to remember to square the three and the square root of six. So I would have three squared and the square root of six squared. Three squared is nine. The square root of six squared is six. So I would get 54. In the next case, I square the two and I square the square root of 10. Two squared times the square root of 10 squared. Two squared is four. The square root of 10 squared is 10. So I get 40. If I had wanted to expand this out, I would have had two root 10 times two root 10. I could put my two and my two together to get four. And I could put my root two 10 and my root 10 together to get 10, and I'd get the same answer. This is all one term. So looking at the Pythagorean theorem example number four, we're going to label our shorter sides, A and B, and our longer side, C. Aside from the diagram, which could be misleading, it isn't in this case, I know that this is two times the square root of 10. The square root of 10 is a little bit more than three. So if I take something a little bit more than three and multiply it by two, it will not be bigger than 11. That's how I know that 11 is definitely my hypotenuse. So we have a squared plus b squared equals maybe c squared. Nine squared plus two root 10, all in parentheses squared, equals 11 squared. And we want to see if this is true, and if so, it forms a right triangle. This is 81 plus two squared is four, 10 squared, sorry, two, 10, the square root of 10 squared is 10, 
equals 121. So is 81 plus 40 equal to 121? Yes, it is. So this is, in fact, a right triangle. The next type of problem we will encounter with Pythagorean theorem is to find the missing side length of a right triangle. We know that these are right triangles because of the right angle symbol. So we're not determining if they're right triangles. We are using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find the missing side length. I start every problem by writing the formula down because it's good practice. Once you get used to doing these problems, you may choose not to do that. Then I label my side lengths, A, B, and C. C is always the hypotenuse directly across from the right angle, and A and B are always your legs that make the right angle. So in this case, I have 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. That's 25 plus 144 equals C squared, or 169 equals C squared. In order to undo a square root, I take the positive and negative square root of each side. And this gives me so the solution, positive and negative 13 equals C. However, we have what's called an extraneous solution. Sometimes in math, we get a solution that follows all of the correct patterns, but doesn't make sense in the real situation. So in this case, we know that we cannot have a negative side length of a triangle, and therefore our only solution here is 13 meters. I can write that here, and I could label it up on my triangle. In the next example, we have a missing leg rather than a missing hypotenuse. I will again start with my formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared and I will label my legs A and B and my hypotenuse C. Let's fill this in. A squared plus H squared equals 17 squared. So A squared plus 64 equals 289. To solve this, I'm going to subtract 64 from each side, and I'm left with A squared equals 225. I will again take the positive and negative square root of each side to cancel out my squared on the A. And then I get A equals positive and negative 15, which is the square root of 225. However, I know that I can't have a negative side length, so I am going to instead just write A equals positive 15 meters. So my answer is 15 meters. A few things here. The first is that you want to make sure that whatever you get is in fact smaller than your hypotenuse if it's for a leg so that you can double check that you didn't make a mistake there. Your two legs also have to add up to something that is greater than the other side because otherwise we can't form a triangle. I also want you to return back to the page before where we listed Pythagorean triples. Other than three, four, five, the two other most common Pythagorean triples are five, 12, 13, and eight, 15, 17. You will notice as you do a lot of your practice that just memorizing these three sets of values will help you be able to use mental math to complete a lot of problems. Anytime you see an eight and a 15, you know that the hypotenuse is 17. Anytime you see a side length of 10 and a side length of 24, you know that the third must be 26 because that is a five, 12, 13, just doubled. We use this ratio to find a lot of our missing sides and to determine if triangles are in fact right triangles. You can try the next two on your own. Remember that anything that's a hypotenuse would be labeled C and anything with a leg would be labeled A or B. We'll check these in class tomorrow.